people always uh, ask me what's the, the most important thing in carp fishing. And obviously that's location because you can't catch what isn't there. But after that, once you've located them and you've found the perfect spot to present a rig, the next most important thing is what you've got on the end. You know, if they don't want to eat what you've got on the end, then you've got a problem. You know, if you've got something they really want to eat, then um, you're onto a winner. And that's why I don't really mess around too much. You know, I'm pr pretty much renowned for, for sticking and not being on the latest fad. And that's another reason why I use mainline baits. You know, they've been doing the do for me since I was 17, 18 years old. I've had little flirts with other companies when I was a little bit younger, but since 2009, I've solidly used mainline and uh, I can't think of an occasion where what I'm using has been uh, holding me back. It's only been giving me positives. So why do I use mainline baits? Well, it all started for me back in 1994, about a mile down the road on, a, on an army lake I used to fish. Uh, by hook or by crook, I'd come across a 10 key tube of the original Grange. Uh, a, no fish had come out of this lake for about two weeks. I went down, selected my swimmers. I normally do. I put nine key out of that bait, kept a kilo back to top up with if I got a bite. And by the morning, I'd had 11 fish to just over 30 pounds. As someone very famously wrote many years ago, the original Grange probably had as much impact on carp fishing as the, as the hair rig did. And it certainly had that kind of impact on my own fishing. It was absolutely incredible. And I haven't looked back for a second ever since. I started using mainline probably 15 years ago now, I reckon, when I was about 10, 12 years old. Um, I used to go into Brentwood Angling to see Derek Ritchie in there and he was always making sure I was using, uh, using Mainline, the Assassinate and Activate at the time were the best ones. Um, and then like everyone else, I moved off to, to different bait companies, um, just tried a few bits here and there and I never used to use much boilie anyway, so I'd just go into the tackle shop and buy some random baits. But I always ended up coming back to Mainline. Um, and then probably when I was 18 years old, I started using Mainline again full time and haven't looked back since. So that's nearly 10 years now that I've used it. Um, and in that time, Mainline have come up with the Cell, um, Maple 8, I used quite a lot on the Pulse, I used at the Manor when I fished back there. Um, and the Cell really for me has just changed my fishing. Um, I can't think of another bait I've used that I've got that much confidence in. It's, uh, it's one of them baits you can take absolutely anywhere, winter or summer, and just expect bites if you're on fish. It's one of them baits that you don't need to think about any other bait. If you've got a bag of cell, you can go to any lake and catch a carp. I've just got so much confidence in my bait, and that allows me to fish confidently without second guessing things. You know, a lot of people when they're fishing, they're really worried and they're, they're oh, is this working? I'll try this, and I want to try that, and I want to try this. I never do that. I'm known for sticking to what I, I know works and that allows me to concentrate with complete confidence. Well, how's that for confidence? I've only been out in the water 10 minutes, saw fish going back to the location thing, hadn't seen anything in front of my swim. Move around here, cast out to a pre-clip spot that I knew was in the swim. It's only been out there a couple of minutes, it's ripped off. It's in the weed, so I'm going to concentrate, get him in hopefully, and then I'll show him to you. Here you come. <laughs> well, it's uh, a fish called Early Riser, I think, one of the, the known 30, so I'm absolutely buzzing. Let's get him out. Well, we were talking about confidence, and here's the proof in the pudding 35 pounds 12. Been fishing here at Northy since February, slowly applying a bit of bait. And uh, when you're applying a really good food source, the fish will recognise it and they'll keep coming. And even when you're fishing singles like this, it doesn't matter. If they're searching around the lake, looking for your food, then uh, you've, you've got half the battle beat. I've taken those baits to all kinds of different waters. I'm not the kind of guy that wants to just specifically target an individual fish all the time. I want to experience everything that carp fishing's got to offer. I'm not a particle user, I'm not a tiger nut man. I don't do that kind of thing. I use boilies, probably in three different sizes, 10s, 15s and 18s, and I've taken them all over the country and on the odd occasion abroad and done very, very well some of the hardest lakes in the land and they were completely different environments 
Uh, Raysbury is a good place to start. Back in the day when there were probably 15, 16 fish in there maybe and 120 acres of water. Uh, I, I used boilies there, I, I used the Active 8 and the Assassinate there and did very, very well. One of the first, well, the first fish I caught from there uh, was, was the famous Malins. And uh, I think the capture of that fish from such a difficult water just added even more fuel to the fire as far as my confidence was concerned. Uh, Horton was another place, a much smaller water. I don't know what Horton is, 15, 16 acres of water but it was an incredibly difficult place under massive pressure. And again, boilies led the way. Okay, I caught the biggest one out of there off the top, but all the rest of the bites, uh, again, came on the Grange. I've taken it to other places too. Maybe not some so, so hard. Uh, Cleaverly Mere up in Essex. Sonnen, a 400 odd acre water up near Reading. And again, I've done so well with it. Frimley would be a very, very good example. One of the, the greatest driving forces of my life came from Dick Walker's book that he wrote back in 1953 about his capture of his 44 pound common from Redmar. And Frimley held a fish um, that, that I wanted to catch of, of that size. Um, it's only just up the road a mile that way, actually. Uh, <clears throat> and I went up there and I applied bait. The problem with the way that I applied that bait is I just kept on catching and catching and catching. And it was almost like uh, it, the, the fish competed so much for that bait. Uh, I, I seemed to be getting further and further away from catching the one fish I wanted to catch. But I did in the end and uh, I satisfied 40 odd years of dreaming, which was, was absolutely fantastic. When I was fishing the manor, there was another bait company that was being used on there an awful lot. I'd say probably 90% of the people on there would use that bait. Um, and I went on there with Mainline and everyone was saying, you're not going to catch them, you're not going to catch them on Mainline because they were so onto this other bait. Um, but in the end, I was using just a small amount of pulse, um, which was a, you know, a real rich food bait at the time. Um, and I was using probably just a couple of handfuls around each pop-up that I was using in the edge. Um, and I've really caught my fair share of fish. You know, even the, the Annie at the time, uh, the Northern Lynn a couple of times, um, and I think it was because it was slightly different and such a good food source, um, the bait was working for me and it was working head over heels more than the other bait was for the other guys. I think because of two reasons really you can do that, just go onto a new lake and, and catch fish with mainline, is because it's easy to digest, um, is, the, is the main thing, that fish can eat it, it passes through them really quickly, um, and two, it's high in nutritional value. So the fish are getting a lot out of it, they're getting big, they're getting fat. So why use mainline bait? Well, it all boils down to confidence. If you're confident in something, you'll fish well. You know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, whether I'm fishing a canal in Holland, or I'm fishing my syndicate lake, whether I'm on a baiting campaign, or I'm fishing singles. Wherever I go, I never feel like I need anything else. You know, I, I put on any one of the mainline baits, any one in the range, in various situations, and it always works out fine for me. A lot of people talk about mainline baits and, and they are hugely popular. I mean, the most popular bait I've ever heard of. And people say, well, there's so much of it goes into a water that of course that is what the fish are gonna get caught on. But I can think of loads and loads of examples, certainly with some of the newer baits that have come out uh, where it's been instantaneous and then continued to work over the coming years. One good example, again, going back to Cleaverly Mere, uh, I, saw, I, found, or I saw a photograph of a fish called Hendrix, a charity match a few years before. It weighed 34 pound, a real dark, beautiful looking mirror. And I made him a target. Uh, and the first cast I ever made, this was with the new Grange, uh, just before it came out. Uh, and I know it hadn't gone into the lake before. Uh, the first cast I ever made, and I put about a kilo of bait around it, uh, about half six in the morning, and it was Hendrix at 44 pound. Another good example would be when I changed to the hybrid. The first time I ever used it in 2011, uh, I went up to Manor on a uh, linear fisheries and I was going to spend the winter up there chasing a fish called Spike. <clears throat> I had nothing the first night uh, and in the morning I saw a little oil streak coming up maybe from someone's bait. I don't know what it was but it was something in a lifeless world and I went, I reeled all my rods in uh, I took one rod down, it had a little hybrid pop up on it, cast it out. Um, you know, a couple of minutes later, it ripped off and I had a 24 pound mirror. 
I moved in there for the night. Uh, I put about two or three key of uh, hybrid out in tens uh, and fifteens. Uh, and about half past four in the morning, the rod rips off, and there in the bottom of my landing net was my target spike at forty-four pound and six ounces. Those are just two examples. Uh, there, there are many more. They work instantaneously. They continue to work because of the food signals that they send off. Because of the style of fishing I do nowadays, it's a real mix for me. So sometimes I'm doing a week filming, um, quite a long session, um, and then other times I'm doing my own sessions where I'm walking around Walthamstow for the day and trying to catch a fish instantly. So my bait has to work on two different levels. It has to work over a long period of time. The fish need to get lots of nutrition out of it so they know it's good for them um, and eat it over a long period of time. And it needs to, to act quickly, that they, they, they know it's good straight away and go down and you can get bites instantly that way as well. Um, and even when I go over to France now, um, Gigantic has probably um, been in Dan's hands for six or seven years now. And when Dan took it over, it was predominantly fish with, um, with, with particle and pellets and different sort of boilies. Whoever was going on there was using a different bait. Um, and then when Dan took it over, we started using mainline. Um, we was putting cell in pretty much 80% of the anglers were using cell. And that first year, the fish put on between 10 and 15 pounds, which is like 20% of their body weight. Um, so that just goes to show how much they're getting out of the bait. Well, if you're like me, and you know absolutely nothing at all about bait, then uh, my, my advice would be, stick to something that's absolutely tried and tested, worked year on year, you know. Today, I've been applying bait since February, and I've come into a swim fishery in the zone, been able to get out quickly, minimally, to a pre-mark spot and catch one absolutely instantly. So it proves the long-term and the short-term effectiveness of the bait. You know, and that's not just in, in recent times. You know, if I go back years and years and years, you know, when I first started using mainline was around the time that I fished the Essex Manor. I caught a load of them out there on the cell, a load of them out there on the Active 8. And then, uh, in fact, before that, I was fishing at, at Sutton at Hone and I caught big common out of there and I was pre-baiting with the cell, March time you know, really cold weather still, you know, people would say they're not really eating much and I was pre-baiting with a couple of kilo of cell and then coming down fishing the naked chods with a little homemade cell court ball pop up and uh, yeah that done the damage at um, Sutton at home and then from there I remember I went to um, Rockford and I fished there in the winter and I started back end of September and uh, I was catching steadily through October and November using a hybrid, I was applying it with a bait boat real real long range like 160 yards 170 yards baiting up with a bait boat and then casting singles alongside it and uh, that spot you know over the course of i don't know maybe 10 sessions i was probably putting in 10 kilos each week slowly like 10 kilos sounds a lot but when you think over three nights over three rods it's not that much bait it's only a kilo a rod per night but when you're slowly applying it to the same spot all week and uh, they just got on it, you know, even in the depths of the winter. I remember we had snow, it'd been frozen. I turned up when the low pressure came in, the late thawed, and uh, I caught single scale at 57 pound at the end of January, you know. So the confidence I've got in mainline baits is, is unending, you know. I don't have to think about it when, whenever I go anywhere. You know, even, like, I'm talking freezer baits here, you know, they're, they're the ones that I've used in the UK, but when I go abroad, you know, I just take the Bonoffi shelf life, so the high impact range you might have seen on the on the Masterclass DVDs. You know, we're turning up to lakes that we've never seen before, that are notoriously difficult, armed with shelf life, bo shelf life boilies, which some people back in the day would have said is not, is not the way to catch big fish. But I can tell you now, I've got incredible confidence in it. I turned up at the Belgium Lake, we caught them from the off, so did Danny, and uh, also at the Orion, you know, I'm fishing a, a 6,000 acre lake, and you've got to have confidence in what you're using. Now, when those fish turn up, they're going to want what you've got on the end. And that's what I find. When I, when I find the right opportunity, I find the fish, I find the right spot, I put out whatever mainline bait it is, and I've got the confidence. And touch wood, it's always worked out plenty good enough for me. So why have I been with mainline baits for 23 years? Well, to me in carp fishing, confidence is everything. If I've got confidence in the tackle, and most certainly the bait that I'm using, then I've gone an awful long way to catching the carp that I want. It takes away the worry. I don't have to worry about anything, because if it's got mainline baits written on the packet, whether that's boilies, pellets, dips, pop-ups, or syrups, then I will have all the confidence I will ever need. One of the things I see people do and make a mistake the most often um, is 
changing things and not having confidence in one thing, whether it be rigs or bait, in angling, people make that mistake all the time. They go fishing one week, they use a different rig. They go fishing another week, they use a different bait. Um, and that's a really big issue. If you, if, you, if you can put all of that to the back of your mind, you've got one bait that you like, one rig that you like, and all of your mind then is on the fishing, you'll end up catching more fish. And that's exactly what I do. Um, I don't even have to think about my bait because I know if it's in a mainline bag, I'll go out and use it with confidence and catch fish. I never ever go home after a session and think, I didn't catch that time because I had the wrong bait on. That, just, that doesn't enter my head at all because I've complete and utter confidence in it. And when you get to that stage, your angling can only improve. I've had great success on many of the mainline baits, particularly the Cell, the Hybrid and the Activate. You know, but when they bring a new one out, it's not it's not chancing, you know, you're not trying something out to see if it works. You know, the essential cell, the next one to hit the market, that's been in testing for three years. The results have been amazing and slowly, year on year, they've, it's not like the first, first prototype that comes out, you know, over those three years, that bait has been slowly tweaked and tweaked, going on results, going on reactions by the fish, and uh, by the time it comes out into the shelf, into the freezer in your local shop, you can pick that up with 100% confidence that that has been tested, it works, and it's another string to your bow. <laughs> oh, blimey, hold on. <clears throat> this lake has recently been opened up and <clears throat> these fish are taking full advantage of having a, a good environment to be in and uh, quite amazing. Oh, that's a nice fish. This is the consistency of the bait that I'm using. It's just everywhere I go, I, I very rarely come here. I very rarely fish here. Uh, but when I do, as with every other water, you know, they just keep eating the bait. Um, <clears throat> and it's not, as people think, just a case of piling it all in. You can, uh, bait needs to be used effectively. And what I've done over the course of uh, 36 hours is just to keep bait available to the fish and they can keep feeding on it, which they've done. <clears throat> this actually looks like quite a good fish. Oops. Let's get the net in the water. Amazing. Hopefully, he's knackered himself out of range, but... <clears throat> My goodness. Oh, that is an incredible fish. <clears throat> now, after every fish, I've put a... Uh, at least five or six spots of bait back on the spot. I've been getting liners for an awful long time and a lot of that could be to do with those 10 millers that I put in. They just, there's more of them. It just keeps the bait there longer. If you can't get them, you can break up your bigger baits uh, and spot them out. And let's get him in the net. Well, wow. <laughs> that's certainly lit all my fires for sure <laughs> absolutely incredible what an animal we've spoken about mainline baits uh, my confidence in those baits the consistency uh, that, that they've proved over and over again over all those years um, and you may just think it's easy for me to sit there and say all that but the rods don't lie uh, and neither do fish like this. I'll be a mainline user forever and a day, and uh, I can only suggest you do the same.